What is the most important thing we haven't talked about that we should have talked about, Rhonda? I think we talked a little bit about magnesium, but I don't know that we talked enough about magnesium. And it is important because it's something that is required for, gosh, over 300 different enzymes in your body need it to function properly. So it's what's called a cofactor. And I mentioned DNA repair enzymes. So there's, it's also used to make energy. So you need magnesium to make energy and to use energy. You need magnesium to repair damage that's happening all the time. And close to 50% of the population in the United States does not have adequate levels of magnesium because they're not eating the foods that they need to to get the magnesium. Dark leafy greens, I mentioned it's at the center of a chlorophyll molecule. There have been studies that have shown that for every 100 milligram decrease in magnesium intake, there's a 24% increase in pancreatic cancer incidence. And that's in a dose-dependent manner. So you keep going up and up. I think that people don't realize that they're not getting enough magnesium. Magnesium is required to make to turn vitamin D3 into the steroid hormone. So some people have a magnesium, you know, insufficient amount of magnesium they're taking in, and they're actually not able to make enough vitamin D into that steroid hormone. Again, magnesium is controlling 300 enzymes. Some of those enzymes are actually the ones that are converting vitamin D3 into the steroid hormone. So magnesium is hugely important. It's something that can be easily corrected. The deficiency could be easily corrected by taking a supplement, but also eating more leafy greens, which is the best source of magnesium. The question is, what do supplements do? What kind of supplement do you take? How much should you take? All these things are, I think, questions that people are interested in. So I've got some magnesium here. Is, um, is taking magnesium going to have a positive role then on my, my speed of aging? I do think so. I think so. Yes. We talked about cancer incidents, right? Magnesium, so I think magnesium is one of those sort of minerals that is, when you, when you don't have enough of it, it's causing that insidious damage over time that accumulates and then rears its ugly head, you know, in the fifth, sixth, seventh decade of life. And that ugly head happens to be cancer. So I do think that if you are able to avoid magnesium deficiency and insufficiency, then you are going to be able to basically make sure there's enough magnesium around for everything in your body to use it with, with what it needs it for. So, um, And I've heard you say that 50% of people are deficient in the United States in magnesium. Right, close to 50%. And not to mention, you just talked about you know electrolytes. Well, athletes, they actually require between 10 to 20% more magnesium than the general population because of their magnesium, their magnesium losses are so great. And so they can be even more deficient. Magnesium is needed for red blood cells. And so, you know, people can have lower energy as well. So magnesium, magnesium is so important for so many different things. And, you know, like I said, I think there, I do think there's a trade-off here where whatever magnesium you are getting from your diet, if you're not getting enough of it, it's probably going to make energy instead of being used to repair damage because you need to make energy every day, right? That's the most important thing. If you don't make energy, you die. Like you can't survive. So whatever magnesium your body is getting, it's not going to that process of repairing DNA, which doesn't really matter until you're in your, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh decade of life and cancer, you know, risk increases, right? And so there's this idea this is put out by my mentor, Dr. Bruce Ames, called triage theory, and he's shown some evidence of it. Magnesium is one of them, where magnesium seems to be triaged to energy production at the expense of repairing your DNA. What does that mean? It means that if you're not getting enough magnesium through your dietary intake and you're not supplementing with it, whatever magnesium that you're getting, there's 300 different enzymes that need it to do their function, that your body is finding a way to triage it to the most essential functions that are going to basically help with short-term survival. Triage means it's basically allocating. Yes. It's allocating it to the the processes inside your body that are essential for short-term survival okay. right now. I got you. Long-term health, diseases of aging like cancer, that doesn't matter as much, right? If you're deficient. Yeah. Your body, your body basically says, no, I don't, I'm not going to give whatever 
precious magnesium I have right now to prevent cancer because I need to live long enough to reproduce and pass <laughs> on my genes. And cancer doesn't happen until I'm well, well past that, right? So this idea, it's called the triage theory, and he's, he, it's been shown for um, several different micronutrients. Another one is vitamin K. So vitamin K is really high in dark leafy greens. <clears throat> well, what Bruce, Bruce um, has shown is that vitamin K is important for a couple of things. One, it's important for blood coagulation, blood clotting. And that all happens in the liver. You activate proteins in the liver for blood clotting. If you don't have vitamin K, you can't do that. Right, it's it's one of the reasons why when a baby's first born, they give it a vitamin K shot so that they have blood coagulation. On your YouTube channel, you made a video about magnesium, which I recommend everybody goes and watches if you are interested in going deeper on this subject. And um, on your YouTube, I found a, a stat that said for every 100 milligram drop in magnesium intake is linked to a 24% higher risk of pancreatic cancer. Yes. Which is shocking. It is. And again, it comes down to the DNA repair enzymes that are that require magnesium to be activated. And if over a lifetime, you're part of that 50% of the population in the United States that doesn't get enough magnesium, then you're talking about not being able to repair damage to your DNA over decades. And essentially what that means is, you know, at some point damage happens to your DNA in the right part of a gene that is what's called oncogenic, it's cancer causing. And so eventually it's gonna cause cancer if you're not able to repair that damage, right? And so getting enough magnesium is important to make sure you're repairing that damage. And um, it's not only important for cancer, but also all-cause mortality. So there's also studies showing that people with the highest magnesium levels have a 40% lower all-cause mortality than people with the lowest magnesium levels, and they have a 50% lower cancer-related mortality compared to people with the lowest levels. So again, cancer is still in there. And we're seeing that magnesium intake is very important with respect to cancer. And that is something that, you know, people don't realize when they're not getting enough of magnesium in their diet, they're not eating their leafy greens, or they're not taking a supplement, that they're sort of affecting their long-term risk of cancer. So people with high magnesium levels have a 50% lower risk of cancer death than those with low levels. Right. Hmm. And is that... You, you obviously can't do like a double-blind placebo controlled test on that. So they're, tr they're really establishing causation. So it could be other things like it could be the other dietary factors that go into, go into that. Maybe if we think about causation, people that eat a lot of hamburgers don't have a lot of like leafy greens. Exactly. You nailed it. Um, essentially, magnesium is packaged in these foods that are beneficial, like dark leafy greens. And there's so many other benefits along with them that you can't establish causation and say, aha, it's just the magnesium. I would argue it's probably not just the magnesium, but magnesium does play an important role. It's just, you can't, of course, pinpoint it to just magnesium because you're right, there are many other important healthy things in these micronutrients, in these plants that are beneficial for health as well.